So we've all heard of Pixar. They have made movies since 1995 with their original feature length film, Toy Story. Ever since then, they've been making amazing movies like Finding Nemo, Monster Inc., The Incredibles, Cars, and so many more. All of these movies are so visually stunning. They're so pretty to look at. And a lot of that is due to math. For the original Toy Story, they did not have a lot of math because making a computer animated film had never been done before. Everything that they were going to do had to be completely new. They had to invent everything for doing this. Looking back at the original Toy Story, it's nowhere as good as the animation we have today, but for its time, it was very impressive. Looking back at it, we can see that a lot of the characters, especially the humans, looked very plastic and fake. Now it's good that the majority of the characters in Toy Story were toys made out of plastic, so it looked fine and normal for them, but for the humans it just looked fake and they didn't look quite right. Most of the characters were animated well, most of everything was smooth, but there were a couple of characters that were just very choppy and did not look real, especially Scud. Ooh, sure's a hairy fella. No, no, that's Scud, you idiot. Scud's movements and everything about him just look so fake. He doesn't move naturally, he has no hair, he looks like a fake dog. So if Pixar wanted to start making characters that were a lot more believable than Scud, they were gonna have to start using new math. So let's talk about the math that Pixar used to make their characters look real and believable and not like Scud. First off, let's talk about hair. Hair is a very hard thing to do, and as we saw with Scud, it's hard to animate hair. There was no need to animate hair for a lot of the original movies. Toy Story needed no hair, A Bug's Life needed no hair, and Toy Story 2 needed no hair. But by their fourth movie, they were gonna finally have to use hair, because they were animating Sully. Sully is covered with over two million hairs. Two million hairs! That's a lot of stuff to animate. And if they were gonna be able to make him look believable and real, they were gonna have to simulate the way that his hair moves. Hold up, stop. Let's talk about the difference between simulation and hand animation. For the majority of animation history, things have been done hand animated. All of the original Disney movies, everything is done with hand animation. Simulation is when something is too hard to animate, and so they decide to have a computer animate it for them. One of the first examples of this is in The Lion King, when the wildebeests are running down the cliff. That is completely computer generated, and the people who actually did it were Pixar. So, when you're making a movie and you have something that's way too hard to individually move this by this by this, like Sully's hair, you have to create a simulation for it. But that's not an easy thing to do. The idea that Pixar came up with was to use key hairs. By moving one of these key hairs, it would move the surrounding hairs in a natural way that looked believable. The simulator that they used was called FizzT, short for Physics Test. FizzT moved each of the millions of hairs based on underlying animation and kept them from intersecting with each other and with objects such as the remote control and even untangling them when necessary. Getting Fizz T to work and getting Sully's hair to look believable was a lot of work and it took a lot of testing. Here you can see a simulation of Sully running through an obstacle course. He has no hair on him right now, but that's about to change. This is what Sully looks like with the first test of Fizz T and figuring out how the hair is going to work. As he's running through, you can see that it does not look real. Oh my gosh, his hair! Ah! This is another test of them trying to get his hair quite right, and it just doesn't look real. Uh, 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 it looks awful! But when they finally get the animation right, it looks real and it looks amazing. This is Sully running through the obstacle course, and he looks wonderful! He looks real! This is how real hair moves. But they didn't stop there. They made Fisty able to simulate what hair looked like under certain conditions, like being wet or being in the snow. There's a scene in Monster Inc. where Sully is sledding and he falls in the snow and his body is covered in snowflakes. I'm gonna let the professionals at Pixar talk about this one. This shot really scared me to death. This is the kind of shot that, as an effects artist, that makes the sweat roll down your forehead and makes your heart beat fast. Uh, these tests show uh, the process that we took of the shot as it moved from animation, where the ground is just a, a kind of a flat plane and his body just intersects it. And then it shows how we simulated the fur to show the effect of the wind 
that would later also drive the snow that we would show in these shots. The snow is actually done in several layers. There's a the really fine powdery snow that kicks up when he hits it first. There was a level of chunky snow that made these kind of large pieces of snow that would fly out in front of him and actually impact on the ground. And then there was some very, very, very fine uh, powdery snow that almost looked like a soft cloud. And this is in addition to the snow that's just going to be falling down from the sky. This is the final version of the shot. This has all the effects elements added together, and uh, probably the most important element was the snow and the fur. In the end, we modified the way that the fur software worked so that we could add things into his, his hair. As each hair is grown, we take into account a number of factors, how long he's been out in the snow, what direction the wind is blowing, et cetera, to determine the likelihood that snowflakes will occur on certain parts of his fur. And for that shot, in the end, we ended up with over a million individual snowflakes. What Pixar was able to do is insanely impressive. This is crazy cool. But it didn't mean that they had completely figured out how to animate hair. They had no clue still how to animate very long hair. And that wasn't gonna be a problem until The Incredibles rolled around and they had to animate Violet. Long hair is theoretical at this point. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, time out, theoretical. You know, the movie comes out in less than a year. While they were making the movie, they still didn't have the technology for making long hair. They didn't have the math to be able to do that. They were scrambling to try and figure out how to make Violet's hair look real and not bunch up and look frizzy or fly up in the air. They couldn't get the simulations to work. But Brad Bird, the director, was persistent. He constantly pushed the animators to figure it out because the symbolic importance of Violet's hair was too important to the story. Violet hides behind her hair and then at the end she takes her hair back and she's courageous and she's the hero and if they can't have her have long hair it ruins her symbolic importance. Now she's hiding and invisible. She has to have long hair for the story to work so they had to figure it out. Eventually of course they did figure it out because Violet has long hair and it looks wonderful but there's always something that Pixar needs to do to improve their hair. When it came to Brave, they had to animate Merida's hair, and she had curly hair, and they had to do spring things and hook slaw. There's always something new that they're having to do. It's never done. There's always new math. Let's talk about water. Water is an insanely hard thing to animate. I don't even think it's possible to hand animate it. It's something that you have to simulate for it to look believable. The animation team working on Finding Nemo, the first Pixar movie to use this big of an amount of water, took a trip to Hawaii to look at the oceans and see how it moved, how the water moved, what the water was like, what a real body of water feels like. When they were animating the movie, the director would tell them to simulate the water to look more like Wednesday's water, or to simulate the water to look more like Friday's water. There were five main things that went into animating the water that made it look believable. We clearly can't go to Hawaii, but we can go to my pool. Let's look at those five things that the Pixar animators found necessary to simulate when making water. Oh look, here's my pool. So now we're inside and we can see a couple of things. The first thing that Pixar needed to make correct was the lighting. If you look at the bottom of the pool, you can see that cool way that the light moves around. They had to simulate that. They also had to simulate particulate matter, which is all these bits and pieces that you're seeing floating around. They had to animate surge and swell, which I couldn't show in the swimming pool, but it's how the water affects the things moving around it and pushes that that way and pushes that that way. They also had to simulate murk, which is when things are farther away, they look murkier and you can't quite see them. And when things are closer, they're very clear. And of course, they had to deal with the reflections and the refractions of the light coming through the top of the constantly moving water. This is a lot to simulate, and it seems like it would be very hard to do. And it was, but they were actually very, very good at it. They took a shot of the water while they were in Hawaii and then simulated a shot of that. And they showed it to the director and the director couldn't tell the difference. It looked so real. And they actually had to tone it back. They said, you made the water look too real. You simulated it too well. And we're having cartoony fish swim around. So if the water looks too real, the fish are gonna look out of place. So they had to actually scale back on how real the simulation was. In the end, it was probably for the best because this movie is still one of the most visually pleasing Pixar movies. The water just looks so cool. It looks so awesome. Uh oh, I think it's about time for a speed round. 
When making the movie Cars, they had to deal with reflective surfaces, so they had to learn bi-directional reflectance distribution functions. That's a mouthful, I could not memorize that. But basically it's physics for how light reflects off of the surfaces. And it's very, very hard to do. They had it and they got it at first and they were like, okay, here's how we'll do, we'll make simulations based off of that. But then the cars were shining too much. So they had to tone it down so that they still shined and reflected, but didn't reflect enough that it blinded the camera. They basically had to create new math to make the cars look real. Another surprisingly hard thing that they had to animate were the garbage bags and the garbage pieces in Toy Story 3. Darla Anderson, the producer of Toy Story 3, said it's very difficult to create all of those organic shapes. Garbage bags have to fold in and tumble out of the garbage trucks and go up on the conveyor belt. And the garbage gets chopped into tons of tiny little pieces and then our characters are running through piles of garbage and it would be impossible to hand animate any of that. So of course, Pixar came up with new math for how garbage bags tumble and fall and mess with each other. And then they also had to make particle simulations for how the trash falls and rolls around to make it look believable. There are so many other things that Pixar does that are related to math. Literally almost everything at Pixar is solved with a simulation and with differential equations but they can't always do it. They don't always have a solution. And one of the biggest problems that Pixar had to face that they just could not solve was Hank the octopus from Finding Dory. Octopuses, octopi, octopup, ah. Uh. Hank moves very wet and slippery. His tentacles move around and slime around and that's very hard to animate. So they were trying to simulate it, but it was so hard and they couldn't come up with an equation or a way to be able to simulate it to make it look real. They continually tried to simulate this because it's so hard to hand animate and make it look like a believable, real, slimy moving octopus. But they couldn't figure out the math. And so instead of making math to make all of his eight legs move, they just got rid of one of his eight legs. Hank the Octopus only has seven legs because he just can't, they can't animate that. They cannot animate him moving around because it's so hard to do. And there was no way to create a differential equation or anything to make him move naturally. But in general, most of Pixar's problems are solved with math. And if it weren't for math, we wouldn't be able to go from Scud to this.